What's up guys, Ryan with Athex Fitness here, back with episode eight of Vegan Fitness 101 series. If you guys haven't already, please smash that subscribe button below. It really helps me. Please like and comment on the video too, that really helps me too, and I'm trying to grow this bad boy, and your support obviously really helps. So please, and thank you guys so much. Today we're talking supplements, everything you wanna know about supplements, and do you need supplements on a plant-based diet? And if you do, what do you need? So let's get into it right here. First of all, are supplements necessary as a vegan? It's a pretty heated subject because a lot of people either think you're extremely healthy as a vegan or you're extremely unhealthy. There's one supplement that I think we all know that we should be taking, and that's gonna be vitamin B12. A lot of vegan foods now are fortified with B12, but I still think it's important just to get a couple drops of vitamin B12 in a liquid form, or even just a pill of vitamin B12, just to make sure you're hitting your requirements. There's a lot of nasty side effects if you're deficient in vitamin B12, and it's just not worth worrying about, especially when it's so cheap to get a vitamin B12 supplement. It costs basically pennies to supplement with all you need for like a month. All you need to do is take it about once per week. I prefer the liquid kind just because apparently it's a little more bioavailable. Some people apparently aren't great at absorbing vitamin B12 if they lack something called intrinsic factor in their stomach. That might mean they need vitamin B12 injections, but um, that is very rare and it would be on a very individualized basis. Just something I figure I'd throw out there just in case, but if you're your average healthy person, uh, just taking a couple drops of vitamin B12 or a pill, you know, once per week, you're totally fine. It basically stays in your system for a very long time. Um, so even if you miss it here and there, it's not a big deal. If you're drinking fortified soy milks or something or fortified plant milk or whatever, you're probably getting plenty of B12 as it is, but might as well just cover all your bases and just make sure you're safe. Besides B12, that's really all you need. A lot of people are deficient in um, vitamin D. That's a very common one. So especially if you're in an area with less sunlight and you're not exposed to sunlight as much throughout the year, just get some vitamin D. About 1,000 to 2,000 IU a couple times per week is probably more than enough. Besides vitamin D, uh, one supplement that I also really recommend to vegans and people in general is gonna be DHA slash EPA omega-3s. Those are long chain fatty acids. And basically they've been shown to be help for in cognitive decline as you get older. So basically for brain health as you age, uh, there's a lot of things that it hasn't been shown to be good for that it's touted as being good for. Things like heart health, for instance, um, it hasn't been shown to be very helpful with that, but even Dr. Greger from nutritionfacts.org says that people probably should be getting uh, extra DHA and EPA in the form of a supplement just to be safe. So a great DHA slash EPA omega-3 supplement is gonna be uh, actually derived from marine algae. Um, basically, this is where the fish get it from, which obviously everyone says fish is high in omega-3. The fish eat the algae, and that's how they get their omega-3 uh, most of all. So um, you can cut out those contaminants, cut out obviously eating fish because we don't have to, and just get it from the algae. The supplement's pretty cheap overall. It's um, about 30 bucks, I think, for about a month's supply. It's not bad, it's more money than the B12, obviously, the vitamin D, but uh, it might help you with uh, overall cognitive health as you age, so can't hurt to get some of that. I go for long stretches at a time without taking it just because you know it is kind of expensive, and when I run out, I forget to reorder it here and there. So I don't really worry about it too much. I just take it when I have it. I don't think this is as important as vitamin B12, for instance, or vitamin D. If you have the means to get it and uh, it's not too much trouble, you probably should for overall health. And really besides these three, which I would recommend to anybody, vegan or not, there's not many others that uh, you should be taking as your average healthy person. If you are deficient in anything and you know that you are, then definitely find that specific vitamin or mineral and supplement with it. Um, multivitamins in general really aren't necessary for most people. And there's some evidence showing that multivitamins can actually be a little harmful for your health because it basically super doses these vitamins and you probably get way too many of all the vitamins they put in there. So uh, if you know exactly what you're low in, then get that. Um, iron is fairly common for some people to be low in. Get a blood test if you're low in anything, which you probably aren't if you're eating a variety of healthy plant foods uh, and including these supplements, then you're probably gonna be good to go. You should be pretty weary of supplements marketed as great muscle builders and such. There's just so many junk supplements out there. Most of them just don't work at all or you don't know what's in them or a lot of times they have bad reps for actually putting basically like steroids in them and getting banned eventually and then coming back and relabeling their, their ingredients and then putting more steroids in under a different name. So there's a lot of horror stories like that. I highly recommend if you're gonna try some of these muscle building supplements, just to buy just straight like plain ingredients and don't go for the companies that are putting out supplements that claim they're gonna help you build more muscle. They're 
probably, in 99% of cases, probably not. The only supplement that's really been shown to build more muscle is gonna be creatine. And I highly recommend this to vegans who are interested in building more muscle because we don't consume creatine through dietary means very much at all. The body does produce creatine to a certain amount, but not as much as has been shown to increase muscle if you supplement with it. So creatine monohydrate is all you need. It's dirt cheap. You can get month's supply for like $10. Uh, like a three month supply. Just take five grams every day. There's really no complicated way to take it. Just drink it whenever you can, drink it with water, whatever. If you forget, it's fine. Just drink five grams again the next day or whatever. So they market some other creatine that it doesn't help anymore. There's other types out there. They try to say it works better. It really doesn't. Just get plain creatine monohydrate. It's tried and true. It's dirt cheap. It works great. Like I said, five grams every day and you're good to go anytime. Besides creatine, so there's nitric oxide boosters, which are advertised a lot. These basically increase blood flow in the body. Uh, these are gonna be things like uh, L-arginine, uh, agmatine, I believe, citrulline malate, uh, even beetroot powder, things like that. And these work well. Uh, they definitely increase blood flow. There's some evidence showing that increased blood flow can actually help increase a little bit uh, muscle growth over time, just because you're delivering more nutrients and such to the muscle, like as you're working out. You could probably argue that. Otherwise, it's just kind of fun just to get a bigger pump. Let's say you train your biceps. Blood is rushing into your muscles, and that's what we call the pump. As fine to me as uh, coming is. So I'm coming day and night. Uh, you kind of look, just look bigger just from having more blood flow. So that's kind of fun. Um, also beetroot powder, for instance, which is good for boosting nitric oxide, like I said, is actually a great health boosting supplement too. It uh, lowers blood pressure, and that's something that could be very important for heart health in the long term. So that kind of is like a, a health supplement and potentially muscle building supplement slash strength enhancer also. Besides these nitric oxide boosters, uh, there's a lot of junk supplements out there, like I said. Test boosters are gonna be one that's really popular. Most of these supplements, just they really don't work to increase testosterone levels naturally they could even be risky because you don't know what they're putting into them a lot of times if you want to try something like that try looking into individual ingredients there's some evidence showing that like DHEA might support uh, healthy testosterone levels or um, fenugreek I believe there's a few out there uh, otherwise if you're in the natural healthy level of testosterone levels this really isn't going to help you much at all even if they did work um, there's natural fluctuations that happen all the time in testosterone levels and there's really no benefit or drawback from trying to increase them in the natural range. Maybe you'll get a little more sex drive or something, but it's not gonna help with muscle building in the long term. Uh, either way, be very weary of these supplements. Don't spend a lot. And like I said, just look at individual ingredients and picking up those if you really want to. Uh, there's a lot of other junk supplements out there too that really just are barely worth looking into. Just be very skeptical. Anything that's touting uh, improved muscle growth or strength progress or something, look into the individual ingredients on that label. Make sure they're dosed properly. If any of them have a proprietary blend listed, which basically means uh, it's one ingredient with the amount of grams and then a bunch of ingredients listed under it without how much of each is actually in there, be skeptical of that because they can just include these ingredients as long as they're listed in any degree in the product, they could just throw them in there and say that it has it in there and not show you how much. So it might not have nearly enough to get the effects that you need. For instance, like you want six to eight grams of citrulline malate uh, for like a maximal pump effect or like nitric oxide boosting effect. A proprietary blend could list that as an ingredient and not say how much of that they put in there and basically it's just useless and you're just paying money for nothing. So to cover everything for all that, just be very weary of supplements in general if there's several ingredients and it's a brand advertising it. Uh, look into the individual ingredients. Fat loss supplements, there's only a couple out there that I'm convinced work. Uh, Yohimbine is one that actually has research showing that it works. Uh, you should take this while you're fasted. So before fasted cardio, and you should be doing something like low intensity steady state, or maybe medium intensity steady state like jogging. Uh, don't do like interval training or something. It's not really how Yohimbine is meant to be used. You should use it fasted and you should work up to the recommended dosing over time because there can be some side effects like increased uh, anxiety, increased heart rate, things like that, sweating. And um, generally there's a, a decent list of side effects for this. So be careful when you're using it. People have had like terrible anxiety attacks and stuff using it. And it is banned in uh, Canada, I believe. But uh, that is one that actually has research showing it works. Um, and it kind of just targets stubborn body fat a little bit more and may help improve fat loss by about like a percentage or two over time. Not a miracle by any means, but it might help a tiny bit. Same with all the supplements on here that will actually work, just a tiny bit. You wanna see a miracle, son? Be the miracle. Uh, Raul Sini, 
I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's another supplement that's very similar to Yohimbine. It also goes by the alias uh, Alpha Yohimbine, and it's basically touted as the same benefits as Yohimbine, but without the side effects, or without as many side effects, I should say. There's not much research on this though, so be wary about that, but it is one that I think may actually help with fat loss also, uh, about equivalent to Yohimbine without as much side effects. So that might be worth looking into if you're interested. Caffeine is one that actually does have fat loss boosting uh, benefits also. Uh, there's a few different mechanisms for why this may be. It may be through just more activity because you have more energy, you're moving more in general, which is burning more calories. And it may be through some other methods, but um, that's one that may actually help. So uh, if you are open to using caffeine, uh, that may be something that may be worth doing before your cardio sessions or before your weight training. And then besides these, uh, there's a couple out there that maybe have some benefits but you should look up the ingredients individually on a website like examine.com. Look at the research. It has all the research listed on that website. That's a great website for any supplements, but be wary of anything too, because there's a lot of brands out there trying to just get your money and they don't care if it has any benefit at all. So what do I personally take for supplements or recommend? I personally take a few for a variety of reasons. I do take vitamin B12, I take the DHA and EPA, I take vitamin D also. Uh, besides that, I take ashwagandha pretty regularly. There's some research saying actually that it might be helpful for strength, and if that's true, then it could be helpful for muscle building in the long term. I don't take it for that reason though. I take it more for uh, anxiety purposes and stress purposes. It works great as an anxiety reducer. Um, so if everyone's interested in that, uh, that's a, a supplement that I highly recommend. It's one that I actually really like. And most other supplements I've tried for anxiety really don't work very well. Uh, that's one that I do like. And besides those, I take protein powder if you include that as a supplement. And occasionally I take beta alanine, which is marketed as a muscle builder, but basically the studies show that it only really has a benefit when you're exercising for more than 60 seconds at a time, which doesn't really apply for weightlifting so much. It may help for cardio. Um, it's something that I kind of just take here and there if I feel like buying it. It's very cheap, so it lasts a while. Uh, that might be worth looking into for you also. If you guys have any other supplements I didn't include on this list, uh, feel free to comment below. Uh, feel free to comment below also if you have any other questions or anything. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like the video. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode, episode nine. Peace out.